Hey out there, legal warriors. There is one, one critical thinking mistake to avoid in criminal cases. And I don't blame anybody for making this mistake. And I've been doing this 20 years before I could really figure out how to articulate it. So if you're interested in this, stay tuned. This is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Fryer. I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm's been defending people charged with crimes all throughout Washington State for more than 20 years. And I'm putting out these videos to help educate the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. Now I'm just going to jump right into this. Anyone who's been watching this channel for a while knows that some of the video topics I come up with uh, sort of mirror uh, what's going on in my law practice. And sometimes I find new ways to explain things to very well-meaning clients that are really trying to help their case. And um, newer attorneys may not know how to think about it this way, and it took me many years of experience to think about it, but the one mistake that clients make, especially highly uh, educated, smart clients, they tend to think too specifically about the evidence too soon. They put too much weight on the evidence too soon. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's think about it this way. In the criminal system, each entity, each uh, you know, type of position is just a person. There's a court who has a judge, right? There's the prosecuting attorney's office who has a lawyer that works for them. And you've got a defense attorney, right? Probation officers, all that. And early on in the case, while the client just has one case, the prosecutor has hundreds of cases. Your defense attorney has dozens of cases. The court might see you know, 500 cases, right, in any one month. You know, they see so many cases. And so there's only so much executive function or thinking power available to the deciders at any stage of your case until the very end. So let's just start from the beginning. Let's say someone comes in with an assault charge and they're really, really... Uh, detail. They're unhappy with what's in the report that, um, well, no, I didn't say that I was going to kill them. I said that I should kill them. Or, or, no, there's this inconsistency in the statement by the alleged victim. First, uh, he says that I pushed him. And then the second time he talked to the second officer says that I hit him. Well, that difference means it must not have happened or it could be any types of things. And so a client early on really wants to get focus on the fine details. And early on, it's not the fine details that moves the case forward. The mistake is thinking that the fine details are what's determinative of what's gonna happen. Details are important, but they're not the most important thing, believe it or not. And that's because the people making the decisions have no real incentive to get into the nitty gritty dirt of the case and every fine detail until and unless it gets to a trial because they just don't have the room in their head to to focus on each case in that way there's nothing in it for them they don't need to right and i was a prosecutor for seven years so i know this myself the analogy i've come up with is early on in the case it's like going to a generalist a general doctor who's going to make a broad diagnosis of what's going on in the case and find a solution on a broad level and hopefully that broad diagnosis cures the problem it cures your case and so you may have heard me talk about it before there's sort of three steps to doing defense work uh, to, to get the people to do what you want you know one is you don't you don't rush the case because early on in the case is when the people are the most upset right that's when the prosecutors are most afraid of letting you go is early on because it's new, whatever's, whatever's happened, right? Everyone's the most upset then. Two is that typically the client needs to do something so the prosecutor can feel part of the solution, right? It's not their job to let you go. It's their job to respond to the case in some way. And then, you know, the third step is, you know, how we talk to the prosecutor about the case. And so um, that third part is where some of the details matter. But the most important part is the sort of letting some delay happen and having you do some stuff uh, so we can generally talk to the prosecutor about what's fair, 
what's right, what the general problems are in the case, stuff like that. We, a client oftentimes wants us to really hammer some little detail with the prosecutor. And the prosecutor, if they had only one case, they could really focus on that detail. But they don't have only one case. They've got hundreds of cases. And so if you really hammer them on a detail um, without the rest of it, they're just shut down. Right? They don't need to listen. They don't have to listen during the COVID times. It's hard to get them even on the phone. And so why I bring this up is because it causes a lot of anxiety or mental pain for the client when they are thinking about it wrong. Um, they're thinking that that moves the case forward when most likely that will only be the smallest part of what moves the case forward in step three, how we talk to the prosecutor. So there's the generalist and hopefully we get the case solved, get the case dismissed on at the generalist level. And let's say um, we don't get it solved there because it's a hard case or the fact pattern looks bad or the prosecutor just won't pay attention or the criminal record of the client's really bad and so there's no deals on the table or it's a felony and we can't resolve the felony. Well, that's when we turn into a surgeon. Okay, so think about it. Your generalist makes a broad diagnosis but if there's a cancer that gets has to be cut out, they bring in a surgeon with a scalpel who now every little detail matters. And so once the case gets to a trial setting, then all of those little details begin to really, really matter because then the prosecutor will look at it differently than too because now that they have to, there's something in it for them to look at it at a fine detail level. There's a trial where they've got to prepare and actually ask people questions and get them to testify to things. And so now, is when those details matter. Now is when the prosecutor has to say, well, what can I actually prove? What witnesses will actually show up? What might the defense actually say? And, and now is when there's something in it for their head to get down to that level. And so these are general rules, but the biggest mistake I see is the anguish caused uh, in a client's own head by thinking it works one way, like when that's probably not how it really works, okay? At least not for me. Every attorney is different. Other people might disagree, but my success over 20 plus years of doing this has been based upon realizing what capacity a court has and a prosecutor has and I have to deal with the case. And we don't need to get into exactly who's right or who's wrong if we can get to the solution that we need in another way because quite often focusing on the details to a high degree works against the defendant because oftentimes they've done something wrong, or at least arguably so. A police officer's written up a whole bunch of stuff, really one-sided, trying to make them look wrong, and that is the prosecutor's Bible, and they're gonna cling to that. The more we press the facts, the more they cling to it, okay? And so there's a time and a place, but not always in the way that someone would think. So. That's my opinion, and that's my epiphany, and hopefully, if you're charged with a crime, um, it might give you some peace of mind to think about, hey, ask my attorney what things I can focus on now that's going to help drive the case where I want it to go. In certain cases, we need all those facts. In certain cases, we need that right away. If there's witnesses that an investigator needs to go talk to, we need to be prepared for the future. Facts matter, but realize they don't always matter early as much as you think. So if you find this video useful, please like, please subscribe, more people get to see it. And even more importantly, if you need some help, feel free to give my office a call. We'll pick up that phone, we'll respond to that email, the text, whatever you send us. We'll listen to what happened, we'll identify a way forward, and we will be there for you. Thank you.